Hi guys, welcome back to the Guna Pod with myself and Adam. Just a little World Cup special we're going to do for you tonight. I uh, hope everyone's had a good week and weekend. How are you doing all right, mate? Yeah, all good here. Yeah. Christmas decorations yeah. done? Yeah, finally. Cat still under your feet? Always. Literally <laughs> always. <laughs> right, let's get started, mate. So we're... um. We're a week into the World Cup so far. It's not been a bad week. Week Four games a day is sort of like a dream to guys like me and you, mm. even if it is sort of tedious internationals. What have you made of it? Uh, I think it's been much better than I actually expected it to be. Um, quite a few shock results already. Um, England started all right and then the usual, but it's, it's, been, it's been quite enjoyable actually. Yeah, it's not been bad at all, has it? The stadiums are unbelievable, haven't they? I hadn't seen any of them yeah. until the tournament kicked off. I'm a little bit heartbroken. That they're only keeping one. They're knocking the rest down, I heard, which is seems ludicrous, yeah. doesn't it? But I suppose yeah. they've got no call for them. Mm. It's just amazing what money they've got and how they can waste it. Isn't it? But, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I think it's been it's been all right. It's been a, a World Cup's always helped when there's a couple of shock results, I think. The Saudi Arabia... Uh, result against Argentina just got everyone talking about it, didn't it? Everyone yeah. was talking about the World Cup then. It was almost like that was the the kick on point it needed because until then, sort of pretty much everything that should have happened did. Um, yeah. Is there anyone that's stood out for you, sort of player or, or country? Um, no, I don't think it's a particular player or country, but I think um, obviously for the game. Um, Spain, where they won seven now. Um, yeah. I thought that was a really good game, and I don't, I don't think anybody expected Spain to to turn up like that. Um, so yeah, I think no. so far, uh, you know, that, that that's the for me that apart from the shock results, and that, that's obviously the game so far. Um, but yeah, not not just yet. There's nobody, there's nobody standing out just yet. Um, how about you? No, it was a hell of a performance by Spain. I mean, to be fair, I didn't didn't watch much of it at all. I think it was one of was it the four o'clock game? Um, well, I would have missed most of it due to being at work, but yeah, I think it was. I think it was okay. Um it's a hell of a statement win, especially when you consider Costa Rica going and beat Japan today. Mm. It just shows how good it was. It's just one of those free games, I suppose, where every time they went forward they scored. But obviously Costa Rica aren't as bad as a seven nil defeat. Um, yeah. A country that stood out for me, their performance is Morocco. They look good. I watched yeah, them earlier. They, they, they wiped the floor yeah. with Belgium earlier. Um, they were good against Croatia. So they've two two their two hard games out of the way. They've got four points. Um, I, I don't know, you know about you, did. but I, I I always think that Belgium seem to underachieve because if you look at the team that they've got, they've got really good players, and they don't seem to really get as far as you expect them to. I think they've had their time, haven't they? A lot of their stars are sort of ageing now. The defence is, mm. you know, on the waiting list for an old people's own. <laughs> um, they just, they, they've got no punch going forward. De Bruyne looks a completely different player. Yeah. Um, which I know he obviously played for better players at Man City, but he just, he, I watched him earlier and he looks so far off it. I don't know if he's knackered or he just doesn't have the same chemistry with the players around him, but... Yeah, Martinez is a bit of a passive manager anyway, isn't he? So they're never going to be free flowing, and you'd think that was that would play to their strengths just to attack, but yeah, they, they don't. And you're spot on. I think they they do underachieve, and I think they look like they're going to head out. To be honest, I think Croatia will beat them yeah. and knock them out. But, um, when they play football like that, they're no loss to the tournament anyway. Really, mm. there's a few countries that are just. Are yet to turn up, haven't they? Argentina, another one. They scraped past Mexico. They were poor in that game. Obviously, lost to Saudi. It's, um, it's wide open. And it, I, yeah, I expected Argentina to be through already. I expected England to be through already. We'll get onto England in a bit. But there's some some shock results and a few of um, what you call the smaller nations pulling up trees and impressing. I don't, yeah. I don't know if that's down to bit of arrogance on our behalf or just ignorance of not really knowing what to expect from these places or or they are just sort of catching the, the, 
the top nations by, you know, by surprise, if you like, a yeah. bit underprepared. Maybe they've had a few extra weeks to prepare for the tournament. And, you know, a lot of the players that come from Europe only stopped the week before, didn't they? So they've not had any prep time with their countries yeah. and things like that. It might have played into their hands a little bit. I don't know. But so far, so fo- so good. But yeah, Morocco have impressed me. I think they can uh, spring a few surprises. I wouldn't be just surprised to see them in the quarters. Yeah. Go as far as the quarters. They've got a few good individuals. Go for their team, you think. Oh, I know him. I know him. I know him. He plays yeah. on the good side. He plays. It's really weird that they've got four or five high-profile players, and the rest of it just seems to coexist in harmony with with the top stars. It's um, they've got a good setup there at the moment. They're, they're going to cause some issues, I think. I wouldn't want to play them, keep an eye on them at the moment. <laughs> no, I think. I mean, our game, our game the other day wasn't uh, wasn't really worth the watch, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't impressed. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. I, I said to my mate yesterday at football on Friday it was the, one of the first times I can ever remember really puffing my chest out for England and and saying we're going to thrash the USA tonight, be three or four nil. I was really pumped with how we beat Iran because especially the way Iran, you know, took the piss out of Wales. Basically, it was, yeah. showed how good our performance was against them. And I just thought, you just go for it, Gareth. Like. Get the group over and done with. Rest the players that you want to against Wales. Then now we've got to get something at the Welsh game. Yeah. To, to guarantee going through. Although I think even if we lost, we'd be through. Yeah, I think so because the the way that the um, I think the way that the next game falls kind of um, because yeah, around the play. I don't don't uh, think anyone US, can swing the goal yeah. difference, can they? Unless Wales beat us five 0 no. or something. You know? No, I don't. I don't think so. But he just. And this will bring me on to my next question. But I just played with a handbrake on for ninety minutes. They they were the much better mm. side, USA. And then when you you think you want to gain some control of the ball, and he brings on Henderson. Yeah. To shore it up, and you know why? I I don't understand why he doesn't rate Foden. I don't get it. I think Foden's a little bit overhyped at times. If one talks about United to second coming of Zidane and he's not he's not at that level yet but yeah he's clearly better than Mason Mount he's clearly better than Raheem Sterling I'd argue on his day he's better than Saka no I think no, I think you're he's, right I think, he has to you know, play he's, 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 a, he's a top player and you know you've seen him you've seen him do it for City he's come on and he's you know he's changed the game he's got that that burst of energy and actually you know he he is a game changer Mm. I I agree that on his day he probably is he probably is better than than Saka based on you know what he's what he's achieved. Obviously he played at you know a high level. He's 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 been able to you know deal with the pressure. Um, but I just feel like I just feel like with Southgate he's got he's got his 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 favourite players not. The players that you know the fans want to see on the pitch. So um, I was frustrated that we're we're chasing the game, we need that burst of energy, and just when you know legs are starting starting to get tired, and you don't you don't bring on somebody of Foden's quality, it's it's a bit frustrating because if you have a nation in the world, the must, they must be laughing at us. I mean, he does literally play for everybody. Yeah. Any any team at the World Cup, maybe but you know maybe not Brazil because they've got the most attacking talent out of all of us. But yeah, he starts for everybody. He, to not even bring him on is criminal. And then his his excuse, well, we didn't bring him on because he doesn't play centrally. We'll play him at you could play anywhere. You, you could you could play him anywhere. I think wherever you put him on the pitch, it makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference in what we couldn't get done, which we couldn't score a goal. If we'd have bought him on, he could have created something. You know, he he, he will drift out to the party, like you know the wide position. He, he will create something from there. But he bought on Grealish. Grealish is a is a wide you know wide player. Mm. He should have, for me, he should have bought him on. And Grealish. it's frustrating that he didn't. Grealish has spent a lot of his career in the middle as well, so he, he could have gone in the middle. Yeah. Foden could have gone left, or right, or, you know, and put Rashford on the left where he plays for his club. He's pl- pl- happy to stick Rashford on the right when he plays on the left mm-hmm. for his club, but won't put Frode in the middle because he doesn't yeah. play there for City. 
but City have Bernardo and De Bruyne, so it's a little bit more understandable that he gets put out on the left for them and they can mm. all interchange. But to back that point up, Maguire doesn't play full stop for his club, but he's happy <laughs> to chuck him in at centre half yeah. when you've got no, players on the bench that play every week for their club at the back and don't get a minute. So he's got no, to be consistent not. with his decisions. And I see a comment earlier on Facebook, it did make me laugh. You're sometimes better off saying nothing at all than trying to justify your actions and looking like an idiot. And maybe Southgate mm. just should have kept storm about it, to be honest. Yeah. But I feel with him, he's got he's got all of these players, all of this talent. I think even if you look back at old, you know, old England sides when we had, you know, not necessarily well, yeah, I'll say when we did have, you know, Beckham. Um, and then obviously went to Lampard, Gerard. And, you know, you had them, them top players, but we didn't have, like, a whole squad full of talent. Whereas I feel now that this England squad that we've got has so much talent in it, has so much more versatility, and he's not making use of it. It seems like he doesn't... He's got all of these options, but he doesn't know how to play them. He doesn't know how to get the most out of them. And okay. it's, it's frustrating because you see what they can do for the clubs and you see that they are very talented and if you just knew how to if you just knew all of his players better I think maybe not even him maybe if another manager came in who you know could could really get the most out of all the players even if it meant putting them in different positions um, I think we'd, we'd, we'd achieve more um, with the squad and it is a bit frustrating knowing that we've got all of that talent and we're not we're not getting the most out of it, in my opinion. Mm. But yeah, it is just frustrating. We we don't want to overact, do we? It's, it's game two of the tournament. We're likely to go through a favourable last sixteen tie against Group A. Um I don't even think it's, it's even just Holland. You know, yeah, I don't course. think it's just the World Cup, though. I mean, if you look at the Nations League, we didn't win a single game in a group that we should have We should yeah, have we, been when you put doing it like that, much that's better. One, one victory in eight, then, isn't it? Yeah, it's, like that. it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not good balls, enough for what we've got. So, I mean, we got a draw with Germany. I think we were lucky to get that draw, that 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't, didn't beat Italy, didn't beat um, Hungary, was it? Well, we got fresh um, from Hungary, didn't we? And it's it's you know it's it's not it's just not enough really. Um, but I think you know if we if we I think because we had such a good Euros, we've kind of set that that standard of you know we mm. want to compete for stuff. Um, the bar's high, isn't it? Yeah, and I, th- I think I think we will win something with what we you know with what we've got even if it's you know in another four years when when they're in their prime but still whoever whoever's managing the team at that point needs to know how to use to lies all the, of this talent that we've got. The bar should be high though. We've left the highest scoring Englishman at home in Ivan Tony. So there's so much talent in that squad. Yeah. So much talent. And if you can keep the the thinner areas of the squad like centre mid the quality behind Bellingham and Rice drops off a little bit. If you can keep those guys fit, you know, get yourself a two, three nil need and take them off. Yeah. You know, against the van, they played 90 minutes, so they're dead on their feet by the end of the USA game. Yeah. You know, and obviously that, they that played didn't for need their... to happen. And this happened played. in the last World Cup. That's why Croatia got the better of us. Yeah. By the end, they were just all burnt out, weren't they? Mm. It frustrates because no. I don't I don't want to lose my call about it because you know it is early in the tournament, but it just Having seen us foul with him so many times, I don't rate him at all. But then again, I sat here with a couple of mates Friday watching the game, and we couldn't name a top international manager that gets a, a top Premier League job. No. So maybe we are, maybe I am too harsh on him. Maybe he's just part of the international circus that mm. you know all the top managers manage club football, don't they? That's where the yeah that's where the party's at. Looks like you know regular as well, but. No, I think they they will improve. Um, I've got to, I've got to really. And if not, then you know we we won't deserve to be in the competition. So hopefully we can. Uh, I mean, the group stages. Luckily, looks it looks like we will make it through. But then, 
you know, they've really got to they've really got to step it up. Yeah, you don't. Well, I go... think all the teams, all the teams really, because none of them have been, none of the top teams have been, um, well, apart from Spain. But I don't think any of the top top teams have been. Um, oh, and France as well. But I don't think, and obviously Brazil got, uh, you know, got that win. But I still don't think any team has been like massively, um, like miles ahead. No, I think, I think all the teams look a bit fragile at times. So funny enough, I think. Brazil looked really good when Neymar went off. Um, yeah, he was so they took him off, and I think Rodrigo small. come on, and they brought Martinelli on, and Jesus, and mm. uh, I forget who the other player was that come on, but someone for Parqueto in midfield. Um, and instead of just looking for Neymar every time, they just popped the ball around. It didn't matter yeah. who they passed to; there was no ego involved in it. It was pass, mm. make the best passing option rather than trying to play. Find Neymar, yeah, and they look really I thought good. He was wasteful as well. Yeah. But Neymar, he, just, he gets the ball and he just tries to beat three or four people. He doesn't do anything simple, or he's it, just obviously he's a very talented footballer. But I think he there's no cohesion with them like that. And they look really good once they they switched it up a little bit. So yeah. I think once they get going, because I think he'll probably miss a couple of games now, from what I hear. Yeah, you he's, might see Brazil really purr now. Yeah. Yeah, his ankle looks really. From what I've seen in the pictures, his ankle looks really swollen. So I'm, I'm yeah, he's really at good. least missing the next game. Um, mm. Maybe, maybe the one after. But um, yeah, I enjoyed watching him. Obviously, I watched, uh, I watched the, the game the other day just to see, you know, how Gabby's and I think uh, Martinelli looked really sharp when he come on. Yeah, um, look but the whole them. team, the whole team. I mean, finished just fast and. You know, he's, he gets past the beat, beats the players, c- c- creating the tightest of spaces. But as much as I hate to mention him, Richarlison's second goal was just absolutely ridiculous. Like how he managed to do that and put it away. Yeah. Um, but he's he's got the confidence, hasn't he? When he's he's, he's form for Brazil is just Great you know, much yeah much improved. But it was a good game. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, because Serbia didn't look any mugs either. To be fair. They had, no. No, they had little punch about him. Uh, I, I thought Mitrovic had a really poor game, which didn't help them get forward. But they, they defended quite well. They kept the ball well in the first half. As soon as Brazil scored, it went to a bit pear shape for them. But I think they, uh, they were um, fancy themselves to get through as well. They're, they're not a bad side, Serbia. Yeah. Be between no, them and Switzerland, they... they would have fought for second place in that group. Yeah. Is um, I only know someone you're going to say in this question, but is there anyone you've watched that you think Arsenal should go and get? Um, I like Gakpo. Yeah. Um, I really like him. I know that United were linked with him, I think, last summer. Um, I also seen him obviously play against us in the Europa League, and he mm. looks like a real threat. He looks like you know, a really talented player. So I think he stands out... Uh, as a, an affordable player. Um, but other than that, I think he's obviously Vinny. <laughs> We're not going to get him, but obviously I'd love to get a player like him. But, um, you know, I think that's it because, yeah, I think that's it. How about you? Well, the only other one for me, I don't think we'll go for Gakpo. I think he's probably nailed on for United in January, especially yeah. with Ronaldo being released. Uh, the only other one I'll be looking at, um, and we are linked with him, is Asensio at Spain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because he's got six months left on his contract, and I think Madrid are looking maybe to loan him out and get him off the wage bill for the second half of the season. And on loan wouldn't be the worst sign in the world for us. We need just a bit of quality and depth to come in, don't we, for the mm. second half of the season. So if he's, if, he's in an, if he's in the Spanish national team, the way I see it is he's good enough to play a part for Arsenal, yeah. whether it's off the bench, Especially rotation, on whatever. Uh, yes, he's sure not a bad like. footballer. He's just lost his way, hasn't he? Um, mm. At Madrid, maybe too big, too soon. A bit like Erdegaard, you know, he's come away from Real Madrid and reset his career, hasn't he? So yeah, um, yeah, I'll be having a look at him and uh, trying to watch Milinkovic Savic a little bit as well. Mm. Oh yeah, for, yeah, for he, Serbia. But I think that, yeah, it's probably more saying for the summer. But he looked quite good and tidy. He's got a big physical presence, which I like about him. But yeah, he doesn't play. A deeper role, which is, I think, the sort of midfielder we're going to be looking for. Mm. 
Um, which brings me to my next question to you. It's a little bit more Arsenal based than international football, but if you had the choice in the summer, uh, in January, Tillemans or Danilo? Uh, oh, it's a difficult one. It is a hard um, one. I'll, I'll give you my reasons why it's hard in a minute, but I just want to just interest I'll you. Say, you think. I'll say Danilo on the basis that I think that we'd get Tillemans in the summer for free, even if there's other, other clubs sniffing. So that's, that's the only reason. Um, and I think we'll, we've got enough to get him in January to twist and get him at a bargain price. So that's my only reasoning for that. But it's, it is a really difficult one. It is tough. And I, I, the, I'm with you. I lean towards Danilo in, the, in January um, and re- revisit Interlemans in the summer. Just purely because I think Danilo is more suited to replace party in the team if he can, mm. if he has to have a spell out the team. At, I don't see Tillemans being able to play the deep role. He, he might be able to, I don't know. It just seems more of an attacking midfielder to me than anything else. And we're well stopped yeah. in that area. You know, you've got Vieira, you've got Erdegaard, uh, obviously Xhaka's playing out of his skin there and he's never injured either, Xhaka. So unless he's yeah. suspended, he, you, you're more than likely to see him in the team. Touch Touch wood, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, if you're even looking at a fourth choice option in that place, in that left eight, I would say Smith Rowe. Mm, yeah. To play there. I don't think yeah, obviously he's going to he's gonna be for us. He's going to be fit as well, isn't he? Hopefully after after the uh, exactly, after yeah. the World Cup's finished. So yeah. um, that's why I think they can wait. Do need, we need an enforcer. Need, we're we're going to need one in January because obviously Party's going to the African Cup of Nations, isn't he? So. We're not, not gonna. Is there, is there an African Cup this year? So soon? I think so. Is there? I think yeah. There's one there last is. year. I think I think there. It might not actually be the Cup of Nations, but there is a. a I think there is a tournament like that. I'm sure I read. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm sure I read that we're going to be losing him in January to uh, to one of those tournaments. Um, well, they have to. So someone then, don't they? So, well, we'll have to get somebody in January. So whether it be Tillemans or. Well, like you say, Dinero's more, you know, that, that attacking player, but maybe we'll just yeah. go for for Tillemans then. But either way, um they're both they're both good options and, and quality players, which is obviously what we uh what we need. Yeah, definitely. I mean I think by the by the summer both will be at the club anyway. Yeah. Just it'll be one in January and one in, in June or July, but one player that does look like he's on his way in uh, is Midrick from Shakhtar. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've just been watching a little piece on him actually on YouTube before we, we got going. 40 million up, rising up to potentially 55, 60 is what is being yeah. muted in the press. Um, I think that's based on Champions League qualification, potentially uh, winning the league over a certain period of time, things like that. But it's all. Um, yeah. All if buts and maybes, but 40 million base fee. Obviously, he wants to join Arsenal. He's been quite public about saying that. Um, there's no smoke without fire. Obviously, this news won't go away. Fabrizio Romano's hot on it as well, constantly linking us with him and confirming our interest. So now, I guess from my our point of view, we want to see this deal done so he can join on the first yeah. of January. There's no point dragging this out to the end of the month. No, and I think um, it's I think it's a, a good result as well for for Shakhtar and for us because the player wants to come he's mm. like you say he's been public about it he's, he's spoken highly of, of us um, and they were you know Shakhtar were kind of saying we're going to get as much as we can for him and then I think they they were kind of going to start pricing teams out which then starts to become dangerous when you've got an unhappy player but I think 40 million as a base um and then rising up to you know 55 60 i think i think that's acceptable for a player of his uh you know of his talent so it's good business really from from us to get him for you know 40 because if you look what you can get for 40 in the market um i think, I think that's a really good pro- you know a really good price tag to put on him um yeah yeah. A bargain really for us if he if he turns out to be as good for us as, as he is for, for them. And obviously he's got the 
Champions League experience as well. So um, I want to see it done. I want to see it done very early. Uh, get it wrapped up. Get him in, and you know, get him settled in. Um, yeah. So, a quick question for you then, because of the transfer fee, would you, if you had that money to spend, would you take him or Gakpo? Uh, I'd take him. I'd take him simply because he's he's come out and spoke publicly about his, you know, his his desire to play for us. That, you know, he wants to he wants to achieve more. He wants to play regularly, and he wants to play for a you know a top team. And I'm not saying Shakhtar aren't, aren't a top team, but you know, Arsenal is a different, a different level, and I yeah, think different, it's different he improves level. us. He improves us, and he's, he's that he's the profile of player that we're after. He's, he's very talented. He's young. Um, he's obviously got a love for Arsenal. And that's what you want. If you look at all, you know all the players that we've got, they've got that that love, which actually I think that's why we perform the way we do because the players have got that desire and that passion to actually you know, put the shirt on and play for the shirt. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, choose, I'd choose him over Gakpo in any day. Yeah, I think I tend to agree with that. Although Gakpo's figures are slightly more impressive. He's playing for a dominant team in Holland, um, mm. which may inflate him a little bit, although he does do it for a country as well. I just think you're right, Mudrick wants Arsenal. Gakpo probably he has been flirting with United a lot and you know, I'd be happy for him yeah. to just go, go there. I don't want anyone that's sort of flirting with that club and want coming to ours. To be perfectly honest, mm. do you see Mudrik breaking into the first eleven, or is it a case of plenty of rotation and just getting his game time in um, all three positions up front rather than just specifically targeting I one think, position? I think initially he's going to be. A bit like Bieri, he's going to get his chances when he gets his chances. He's going to have to make the most of it. Yeah. Um, but I think it seems from the way that he speaks that if he knows he's going to get his chance, he's happy to be patient. He's happy to. I think he knows his quality. I think, I think he knows that once he gets his chance, he'll take it, and then you know he's going to make it difficult for for other players to get in. Mm. Um, but I think. With the way that Arteta is, he's happy to put a player in a position and try him out and give him a chance. So actually, he might come in and then play in a different position. Um, but I, 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 I don't know. I think I don't think it'll take him long to get in. But I think he's going to be if we get him in January, he's going to be a massive, a massive part of us finishing where we want particularly yeah. in the league, it's another option for when the you know the the fixtures start to get tight again, when we get the you know the pile up. And it's quality. Absolutely. It's another another quality option. It's a quality option off the bench if we need somebody to change the game. Um so I think re- regardless of if he's of what you know what happens, I think he's going to get his chance and I think I think he's going to he, when we get him obviously I think he'll be a top a top player for us. Do you think signing him ends Reese Nelson's career at Arsenal? Because Reese um, is out of contract in the summer, although he's expressed his desire to stay. And I would have thought it'd, it'd be minimal fuss with wage demands and things like that. As long as they offer him an extension, he'll sign whatever the terms. But I, I find it hard, especially with Smith Rowe sort of being used as a wide option by Arteta in his tenure. Um, I, I don't I don't think it ends his chances with us I think mm. it's just more it's another option for us yeah because players are going to come players are going to go and actually could Reese be another player that plays in a different position yeah I mean he, I think I think he could be he's done and a while hasn't he, gonna, since he's come in yeah and again he's, he's got the love for us so I, I don't yeah I, think I, it I makes would it keep more him difficult. On. It, it, it saves you thirty difficult. million. Sign him up. Yeah. You haven't got to, you haven't got to buy another player in the summer. He's if he's he's fourth choice winger, fifth choice winger. He's not a bad footballer to be fifth choice winger at the club. Um, no. His performance against Forest was decent. I, I had um, my work colleague went to the Brighton game. Obviously, it wasn't streamed on telly anywhere, so I didn't see the game. But he said he was the only player that 
stood out for us. You know, there's something about Reese that I think everyone at the club likes and loves. We've just got to unlock it on a consistent basis. I think, I think offer him a new deal, despite Mudrick coming in, and you've got real depth in options then. Um, yeah. I think you might see Marquinhos leave on loan if Mudrick comes yeah, in. I so think... there's, then there's going to be no game time available for him at all. No, I don't think it's a bad a bad thing to do either. Send him out, get the you know get the experience, and we've shown that we're not afraid to do that because we did it with Saliba, and I think it was the right thing to do because look at what we've got. We couldn't give him the game time to to be able to you know gain the confidence and for him to be the player that he is, even though he makes obviously some mistakes. Yeah. He's made those mistakes at you know another club, and now he's come to us and he's you know he's experienced. He's a top top player, so um, and you can see potential in Marquinhos, and the same with Vieira. He's a little bit sloppy at times, but you can really see the potential in in yeah. you know what we've got. So I think um, um, I think Vieira is going to really benefit from this break. Obviously, he's not gone with the Portuguese side. He had no preseason yeah. with us, did he? Because he was injured. Um, so it's always difficult for him to come in, yeah. new signing, new culture. Oh, he speaks. Good English to be fair to him, but it's a new way of life, isn't it? England to Portugal, yeah. Um, I still new, think completely it's... new club, completely mm. different style of play, and what a role is expected of him, and things like that. From, from us to Porto, he had no pre season, and I think it shows he's got a lack of cohesion with his teammates and things like that at times, yeah. Not really had the minutes because the team's been playing so well, so why would you be chucking mm. him in? I think, um, well, you was at the Wolves game. That assist, yeah. a few players went and celebrated with him rather than Erdegaard. Yeah. And I think yeah. that'll do him the world of good. And now we'll have this six-week break to train with the team, get fit, get up to speed. And I think he'll be a much more valuable asset to us in the second half of the season. Well, he's, he's had some, you know, he's had some good games and he's, he's had some assists and, you know, even, even scored. So it does definitely quality there. Yeah. You know, but I think don't you forget the I mean, obviously we've lost we've lost me throw to injury, but that says something about how well we're playing when actually he's kind of been the forgotten man, not in the sense that you know the fans have completely forgot about him, but it's not like we're all oh we're, you know, we're really missing him. Whereas last season, if we'd have lost him, you know, we'd we'd have been up in arms about it. That you know, we we we've lost well, we did lose him, didn't we, at one point and then uh, party and you know, it's had a massive impact, think, but yeah. yeah. But no, it's just we've got we've got so many options and players in different positions that yeah. Um, we just need to add that little that little bit extra. Um, I agree. I think I think signing two players in January puts us in the bracket where you have fifteen or sixteen first eleveners, hmm. uh, and that's a great place to be with rotation because uh, you're unlucky but, if you're missing five or six at once. Yeah, you know, if and last year we couldn't afford to miss two or three players. This year, I think if we sign these two in January, Mudrick and and a midfielder, it takes us to a new level with the squad. Yeah, and all of us, all of a sudden, rotation becomes a bit easier. As I said, just with Vieira, he should be up to speed, he should be able to fit in seamlessly if Ferdegaard's out or or Jaco and he plays in the left eight role. Um. The new boys coming in. The defense has got good depth anyway, hasn't it? And you can rotate yeah. both fullbacks and not lose anything. And the center halves, chuck Ben White back in there if Saliba has to miss the game. Rob Holding could do a job for a game or two. Even Matt mm. Turner actually is this looked quite accomplished in goal for you uh, for the USA. Yeah, the World he Cup has. And is, is put put a few fears to bed for me because he was worrying me a little bit with some of the performances. He looks a bit shaky, but he he played really well actually against us. Yeah, uh, he was commanding with his. Box good with his feet, things like that. So it's all looking perky for us as long as we can uh, do the business, and we have to, we have to do the business in January. Otherwise, no. first off, no, I think comes a bit of a waste of time. We're we're in a perfect position. We've we've got to take advantage of it. If you go in in January, top of the you know top of the league, and you're aggressive in getting players and not you know penny pinching as such, and you know, I, I can't actually remember a time in the last however many years where players are actually publicly saying I'd like to join Arsenal and they're top you know top players as well just other clubs yeah. sniffing around um, 
the project is obviously, especially for young young players, it's it's attractive, and I think that's why. I think last season, if anybody had mentioned Bellingham, I'd be like, you know, give your head a wobble. But actually, he's a player that wants to improve. He's a player that, you know, he goes for a project rather than money. So, mm. you know, if you pay the money, then you know it, it isn't a you know attractive place to we'll, to go and, and develop. But we'll um we'll touch on Bellingham another time because he's another yeah. potential reason why I think we won't go for Tillemans in January. Mm. Um, because we'll wait to see what situation we're in in the summer and whether Bellingham's achievable. And if he is, we're not going to sign both. But we'll we'll touch no. on that another time because that's probably a bit bit of a longer discussion. Yeah, I know we both want to get off to watch the football. So yeah, last question: Spain, Germany. Yep. What's your prediction? Um, I'm going to go with the Spain win. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be. I'm going to say three one to Spain. 3-1, you think it'd be quite high scoring? Yeah, because yeah, I think Germany don't don't seem as uh, as good as they have been, you know, in previous in previous years. And I think Spain have obviously got that confidence off the uh, you know the seven 0 one. So I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go three one Spain. I think yeah. I'll, I'll get it done comfortably. Yeah, I'm leaning towards a Germany win. I think they. Um... They were embarrassed by Japan, wasn't they? Yeah. Not that Japan are any mugs, but you know no. Germany shouldn't be losing that fixture, and I think that it will, it will spark them into life a little bit. Maybe they'll put this the political bollocks behind them and actually just turn up and play football tonight. And I, I think they'll win yeah. one nil. I think they'll be solid at the back and they'll just scrape it. It'll be a typical German performance. Just get the job done. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how it turns out. Interesting though, because if they lose, they're out. Yeah, I believe are they out? Well, well they, believe, they won't be out, but they'd be they'd have they'd have a hell of a job to do to turn it round. Just thinking, who else is in the group? So obviously, Spain are top one. Spain would have six. Costa Rica and Japan would both have three, and they'd have zero. And then yeah, so they'd have Germany to do. play Costa Rica in the last game, which you'd expect them to win, but Japan would only need a point against Spain. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah. That's actually yeah, they, going to be interesting. Germany have to win, I think, tonight, or at least get a point to put them in a position where they can go through. Um, yeah, because if they win, they'll all be on three, won't they? After yeah. after the two. Yeah, I think yeah, it'd make got, it interesting. If they, quite an interesting they group, actually, actually, if Germany win this tonight. Although Spain's goal difference will see them through, I'm sure. But Yeah, we'll yeah. go down to the... Uh, You'll see, it, see how they, where they are after yeah, the next big one. Game, yeah, this one. yeah be, it, I think it's going to be a good game. Both mm-hmm. teams are, you know, both teams are quality. So we'll uh, we'll see how they if they turn it around from how they turn up against Japan, and hopefully, uh, now we'll have a good game as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know if you wanted um, just before we go, just to mention your your merchandise and stuff like that, or did you want to save that for another time? Um. I think yeah, leave it leave it for another time. So I've got to I'm I'm going to be doing some more, um, yeah. and then I'll be able to get all the links and that sort because I'm still in the process of getting all settled. It's been a lot more, it's been a lot more hassle than I thought it was going to be. So I'll get all the links and that for for next time, and then get them uploaded as well in the uh, in the box for the for the, the guys to go and check out. Perfect. Well, I think that covers everything then, mate. We're all, uh, yeah. all ready and ready and waiting for the football. Yeah, been good. Lovely so we'll jungle. catch up, uh, have, have another pod next week. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Just let me know when it's good for you, mate, and I'll be around. All right, we'll do. No trouble at all. Obviously, we won't do it um, Tuesday because England are playing at seven, but yeah, any other day is good for me. All right, I'll let, I'll let you know. Thanks, thanks again. Great job, yeah, no, worries, no worries at all.